Hello and welcome to Squeaky Balls Time, our Premier League show here on Balls Day in association with Labrooks. We were here during the week, but we're back in the more comfortable Saturday position, although neither of us are comfortable right now. We had the Balls Day Christmas party last night and we are both feeling extremely things, rough. Things are grim. Things so, are grim. Uh, yeah, so if we, like, if we can't react to cheesy puns and stuff, you're just going to have to bear with us. But we have had um, what looked like a really, really crap Saturday mm. of football to analyse. It's actually turned out to be quite good. We're watching the last minutes of West Ham versus Hull. We've got screen. Uh, just below there, it's 1-0 to West Ham at the mm. minute. Uh, actually, Gavin, you've got the rest of the scores. Do you want to update the people? And I'm just going to shout if anything happens. Yeah, here, if it please do. Yeah, West Ham, as we said, leading hull by a goal to nil. Mark Noble penalty in the second half there. Elsewhere, well, the early game, Chelsea uh, went nine points clear at the top of the Premier League. Uh, beat Crystal Palace by a goal to nil uh, with the Diego Costa goal. Um, Middlesbrough are 3-0 up against Swansea. Oof. Two for Alvaro Negredo. And happily, um, obviously, we have reporters across across England today. We can confirm that Darun... Uh, Darun is on fire uh, because Martin Darun scored uh, to make 3 0 in that game. Uh, Stoke and Leicester have finished 2 2. Leicester were two goals down and a man down. Jamie Vardy was sent off in the first half. And we're going to discuss it later on. I think it's pretty harsh. Yeah. Uh, but they've come from two goals down to draw 2 2. Uh, Daniel Amarte, who the very posh sounding French name, uh, he equalised about two minutes ago. So that's only uh, Leicester's second point uh, they've picked up away from home in the league this season. Uh, Sunderland clinging on for uh, three points at home to Watford. Huge. They lead by a goal to nil. Patrick Van Aanholt with a goal there. Uh, and as we said, West Ham United won Hull City nil. And that uh, game should be coming to a Yeah, we're over the four minutes of stoppage time. Uh, Slavin Bilic is going nuts because he wants that whistle blown and fair play to him. A reminder, it's Christmas time. Mm-hmm. There's, there's no need to be afraid. You need to get into the comments. We're doing a, uh, a Christmas themed 11 yeah. that we're going to present at the end of the show so get in the Facebook comments give us your Christmas themed players you know how it works exactly and it is a Christmas tree formation by the way of you course. don't have to ask us. We, Standard. We're, we're, we're on top of it at least that much uh, we have got a couple uh, Rory de Lapland uh, is probably my favourite although I did come up with a Spackman game travelling which nobody else around here likes no, I would god damn it's going in that team that's full time by the way West Ham won mm-hmm. Hull City nil Darren Randolph there uh, kicking the ball away for the final whistle but uh, the main talking point f- first one we're going to jump into is Crystal Palace versus uh, Chelsea because that mm. was the early game we always look back at the early game on this show um, we've been treated to some really good early games early Saturday kickoffs in the past couple of weeks past three weeks Every week yeah. we've done this show. This week, not so much. Uh, well, Palace versus game, Chelsea man. was shy. It was really <laughs> shy. And like I, I really didn't like it because I, I, I was hungover. Yeah. And like when you wake up hungover on Saturday morning and you make that commitment to watch the game, you want something, yeah. anything, and there was pretty much nothing. But uh, this, is, this is what champions do, you know? They grind it out, they bore you to death. With the that's the thing, Chelsea, gonna are gonna, Chelsea are running away with this. Mm. That's they're 11 wins in a row. They're going to be nine points clear at Christmas, um, it looks like. Name the only Premier League player to win 11 games in a row with two different clubs. Kante? No, Victor Moses. He oh. did it with Liverpool in 2014. Wow. When and I, uh, as a Man United fan, I, in that run in, that Liverpool run in, when it looked like they were going to uh, win the league, I made a promise to myself that if uh, Victor Moses won the league with Liverpool, I was going to give up on yeah, football. Um, and then that now seems harsh because Victor Moses has come on leaps and bounds as a That's player nearly. since then, and he's found a role for himself at Chelsea. Uh, and fair play to him. The goal, when it came, now we have, we have some very exciting analysis yeah. uh, lined up. This is a great feature that we're really excited to announce uh, on the show this week. We've been lucky enough, we've had Stephen Ward on our, uh, on our podcast before, but he, and through that link, we've managed to pull some strings and get Sean Dyche to break down Diego Costa's goal that gave Chelsea the 1-0 win today. So here's what Sean Dyche had to say over in the Total Action Football Arena. Thanks, Mikey. Yes, Sean Dyche here in the Total Action Football Arena. Delighted to be here. We've got Tottenham away tomorrow, so these tactical breakdowns are as good for me as they are for you guys at home. It's just a shame that I couldn't do last week when Jeff Hendrick did that unbelievable piece of skill. Um, what a player he is, absolutely love him, but that's for another breakdown. Uh, let's get on to the goal today, which took place. It gave Chelsea a 1-0 win, and it started with Eden, ha- Eden Hazard, and what he's great at doing is, is getting across and opening up the play, and he's going to try and find his teammate Cesar Espiliqueta on the wing. And now what Espiliqueta does, Diego Costa makes a run off the back shoulder of Scott Dan. Espiliqueta sees that, and he floats an absolutely delightful ball right into the path of the big Spanish slash Brazilian striker who does what he does and puts it into the... That's a great save from Wayne Hennessy, actually. That's not how it happened. He puts the ball into the back of the goal. Hang on, Diego, where's your form gone? And that's what he does because, for my money, Diego Costa is the best striker in the league apart from Sam Vokes. Back over to you, Mikey. 
Thank you very much, uh, yeah. Sean Dyche. If you are wondering why we don't have a guest, it's because we've blown a week's budget on Sean Dyche. Absolutely, uh, and hopefully it'll be a recurring thing. Yeah, and uh, hopefully we'll have enough money uh, to show his face the next time. We'll see. We'll yeah, see how that maybe. goes. He's a very sensitive man, Sean Dyche. <laughs> he cares a lot about his facial hair, so maybe that's, uh, maybe that's, maybe that's not that's something why, he's yeah. comfortable with. We'll move on, though. Uh, oh, we always look at the Irish players and how they got on in Saturday fixtures over in England. So, Gavin. What's the story? Yeah, as he, another clean sheet for Darren Randolph. He had his post set a couple of times against Hull. But you made a point there. We were just watching yeah. it there. You made the point that he's got this ability, this ability to smother a ball like no one else. He's so good. He's so good at plucking the ball in the air and then slowly fall, falling in three stages and then hugging the, the ball, doing the goalkeeper look yeah. around thing. Like, whoa! Uh, it's just the amount of practice he's got with time wasting with Ireland. Yeah. It's really, really working well. That's another clean sheet for Darren Randolph, by the way. Absolutely. Uh, otherwise, pretty quiet day. Glenn Whelan and John Walters both played for Stoke. Didn't do a whole lot in that two-two draw with Leicester. Uh, John O'Shea dropped to the bench again for Sunderland. He uh, he started against Chelsea and looked. Looked like an old, old man in yeah, that game, that unfortunately. Um, uh, David Myler, by the way, was on the bench for Hull City uh, in that game against West Ham. Just dropping to the championship uh, very quickly. Uh, Jack Byrne and Anthony Stokes were on the bench for Jack Byrne Rovers against a Reading side captain by Paul McShane. Uh, Free Wes, Jack Byrne. Yeah, Wes <laughs> Brown, by the way, scored in that game. And it finished, is it 3-3? I'm looking for it here. No, 3-2 to Reading. Oh, sorry. Blackburn actually got beaten in that game. Sorry. Oh. Um, <laughs> elsewhere, uh, Greg Cunningham, Alan Brown, Aidan McGeady all got a start. Uh, for Preston North End against the Bristol City team that kept Callum O'Dowd on the bench. Uh, Kieran Clark started for Newcastle as he always does. Uh, they beat Burton Albion by two goals to one away from home. A uh, cracking game between Cardiff and Barnsley. Uh, Barnsley lead 4 3 in the 97th minute. And uh, as. Uh, so that's a cracking game there. Uh, Kieran Westwood started for Sheffield Wednesday against Rotherham. Uh, necessary mention of the fact that Stephen Kelly is on the Rotherham bench. Oh, yeah. um, uh, Scott Hogan and John Egan both played for Brentford against Leeds. Uh, and Forrest Wolves, Stephen Henderson, uh, has been in goal for running. Forrest dropped to the bench. And sure. Matt Doherty started for Wolves. A worrying amount of Irish players on the bench in the Championship. Yeah. Um, hopefully when... Uh, Daryl Horgan and Andy Boyle go over. We'll be able to update you on their mm. progress with Preston. Um, we, a quick throw to the comments. We've got one great suggestion here from Shane Carroll. He said Evander Snowman. Evander Snowman. Uh, that's he a good shout. We've also might. asked the question on Twitter as well. We got some fantastic responses there. So we're forming a team. So if you can think of any Christmas themed footballers, it's Christmas time. Uh, get them in the comments. Let us know. We're going to build a team. Uh, but we were just talking about the Irish players and how they were getting on today. Um, here's a completely unrelated and somewhat random look at uh, some classic goals featuring an Irishman, Steve Staunton. Connor Neville has abandoned the chip van. It just got too hectic in there uh, <laughs> trying to work and sell chips at the same time. So instead, he's taken a new take on some old goals with the commentary. I swear to you, Taylor Report, what a joke. What's wrong with standing up? Here's Paul McGrath. Oh, Jack Charlton uh, will be absolutely furious to see him that far advanced. Uh, ball bobbling about. Villa still have it out to Staunton. God, Villa have a lot of Irish players. Why did? Oh, what a... Now, did you hear that? Absolutely appalling sound out of that netting. Uh, infrastructurally, Old Trafford has serious problems. That was an outrageous thud. Ron Atkinson, there you see, he's not impressed, he's not happy, he's going to be reading the riot act to whoever's in charge of this ground. Listen to this now, listen to this. Oh no, you, won't, you probably won't be able to hear it on the replay. Um, no, you won't be able to hear it on the replay, but that thud will live long in the memory, and I'm sure whoever's in charge of the nets, the goals, the infrastructure at Old Trafford, well, they're feeling embarrassed. I'm sure they want the ground to open up and swallow them. Well, we're 85 minutes into this game, and I don't care anymore, viewer. Bramall Bloody Lane, this place is a dump. Looks like it hasn't had a lick of paint since the French Revolution. Scarlet Pimpernel used to watch his footballer. What's happening? Okay. Oh. Well, you'd have to feel for Chris Gale here. He was really left in an impossible position and had no option but to put the ball in his own net. Leeds win 3 2. I don't know why they're celebrating. Bystanders. Well done, Rod Wallace. Yeah, kick out. I, it really, if you can watch the replay here, Chris Gale, look, just as soon as, you know, he could do nothing but put the ball in his own net. I mean, really, I, I don't know what else he could have done. Leeds players celebrate. Look, as soon as, as soon as he gets on the ball here, you know, what was he to do? Uh, an OG was inevitable. And Leeds win 3-2 and go a long way towards winning the title. Thanks very much for that, Connor. Yeah. What a goal Important by Stones, and we absolutely love it. Um, 
Back to the football, back to the Saturday action. The main talking mm. point that's going to be uh, criminally overanalyzed on Match of the Day yeah. tonight is Jamie Vardy's sending off. Now, he left the ground. I can't remember, I'm not sure who, he, who the challenge was on. Imbula. 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 Who's one of, the, one of the 20 midfielders at Stoke have tried to replace Glenn Whelan with and in midfield, can't. and they can't. Um, no one can. Glenjamin. Um, Imbula, yeah, okay. So he's, he's been hurt by the challenge. He's not able to. I'm blaming Marcus Rojo for this red card. Yeah. Uh, I'm, and I'm, I'm backing you up. I because totally Marcus Rojo has put the spotlight on all challenges yeah. now. Because so referees. Just, and not only is, is Marcus Rojo putting the spotlight on, it's the same bloke who hasn't. Who knows he's made mistakes yeah. uh, with Marcus Rojo in the week. It's Craig Pawson. Yeah. Now, so with Vardy, Vardy was uh, like tussling with Glenn Johnson for the ball. And then Johnson almost seemed to kind of shove him over and pull him back. And then Vardy did kind of lunge. He went off the ground two footed. Um, yeah. missed the guy missed the man he was tackling all together and then Imbula came in and then he just kind of he ended up tripping Imbula now like it didn't hurt him at all but it was a straight red uh, from Craig Poston now we had a debate about Poston highlighting his various flaws because that's a totally fine thing for us to do while we were sitting in these chairs completely firstly um, why the man is not called Craig Dawson is wrong yeah well it's because Konami don't have the rights uh, and, they had to, and they've had to improvise on that it's the same reason you had Neil Lemon playing in the field for Celtic back in the day um, but he's, he's having it like firstly don't, don't they relegate don't they relegate referees when they have shockers yeah, sometimes he definitely do, yeah. should have had to take a championship game today well he did the United Palace game in midweek and he got every decision wrong he so got bad. everything wrong so bad and, and this is going to be scrutinised again you can see why he's done it, though. I mean, Vardy has left his feet. It's mm. going to be uh, it's going to be the main talking point. Yeah. So you know, we've got, we've but now Vardy is Christmas off three match ban. That's true. As as Diego, Diego Costa, Leicester, Diego Costa, and wicked. Costa and Kante both got themselves yeah. uh, Boxing Day off yeah. for uh, Stevens Day off. Stevens is day. Stevens is you need day to add these. Is off. <laughs> you can't. This is, the, this is the Premier League propaganda is making the same yeah. Boxing Day. Uh, let's run through the full time scores. Yeah. Big point for Leicester, that 2-2, it ended up uh, away to Stoke. So great bounce back ability to come back from 2-0 down with 10 men, that's outstanding. Uh, outstanding, Middlesbrough 3, Swansea 0, uh, Swansea are beginning to look gone. Uh, same with Hull City, they've lost 1-0 away to West Ham. Uh, but Sunderland have a bit of fight in them, they've beaten Watford by a goal to nil at the Stadium of Light. Uh, and that's them all, Crystal Palace 0, Chelsea won from earlier on today, and West Brom and Man United kick off at half five. Team news from that game, uh, Wayne Rooney starts for Manchester United. Wow, great, Rooney. Um, but yeah, we said that Jamie Vardy would be the main talking point of the day, but I'm sorry to say again, it's Miser. <laughs> because David Moyes is turning Sunderland around. Because there were reports in this morning's paper where he said that uh, he was promised funds in January and now that's not going to happen because the yeah. owner wants to take over the club and wants to hold the money for that and, uh, and narrow, narrow the... Kind of the uh, Narrow the debt. I don't know. So, <laughs> sorry, I'm not you know gonna, what you're going for. Economics. I mean, I'm all over <laughs> and economics doesn't suit me at this time of the day. Um... So that, no, that's, that's a big one. Yeah, that's huge for some of If they don't sign players, they're going to go down, though. I mean, do they not realise this? They've got, like, four people who can play football there. They've got Van Aanholt. They've got Pick, Pickford, the keeper. It's unbelievable. Yeah. I don't know where. Defoe. Uh, Kershaw is good. Oh, Victor legit. and Ichibi. Victor and Ichibi. Man, He'll man. do a job for you, Big yeah. Vic. Yeah. But uh, I wouldn't be relying on him to keep me in the Premier League. Um, we have a look at the bottom let's, four. Let's so, have yeah. a look. We, we, we haven't been getting much, by way, of suggestions in the comments on Facebook. Thankfully, Twitter was really enthusiastic believe, yeah. when it came to the... Uh, uh, so Hull are bottom game. on 12 points. Uh, best of luck, lads. Swansea, 19th on 14 points. Uh, Sunderland are 18th on 14 points. Then Palace have 15 points uh, in 17th place. So, I mean, Palace, unless they make a decision and get rid of Alan Pardew. That's the question now, isn't yeah. it? Uh, does Pard stay in the job? I mean, feel free to let us know in the comments whether you think Pard should get the sack. Uh, I would imagine most of you do because I get the feeling few people like Alan Yeah, Pardew but they've only won so like eight games in their last 42 or yeah, something. And this and is what Pardew like, The thing is, does. a 1-0 loss to Chelsea, a 2-1 loss to United, it's tough. They might have an easier run of fixtures and maybe they'll get some results. Mm. Chairman seems to be on his side though, so at least yeah. that's good that's for Pard. Christmas 11, it's time to reveal, it's time to reveal, we've got Uh, the Christmas tree formation here. Yeah, obviously. Uh, Thank you for all who got in touch. Uh, In goals, Randolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, no real surprise there. Back four, uh, consisting of Missile Tony Adams, uh, Rory de Lapland, uh, John O'Slay, and Deck Fitzhall with Bows of Holly. Uh, thank you, Sumar. So strong, back four, very tall. Um, a Spackman came travelling has been dropped to the bench in favour of Evander Snowman. Uh, also in midfield, Didi Haman Turkey. Uh, oh. And <laughs> Fairy Tale of Dwight York. Yes. Um, because Roy Keeney needs to play Dwight York in midfield, and that works out nicely. Yep. Uh, then 
Three up top, Victor Tin of Moses, which I absolutely loved. Uh, Good King, oh, you don't like no, that. Uh, Good King Kanchelskis uh, and Kiki Chris Musampa. Uh, obviously, Andy Christmas Carol is on the bench alongside uh, Christmas Eva Carinera. Took me a while to get Kiki Musampa there. Um, and what was that? Eve, Christmas Eva Christmas Eva Carinera is on the bench. Uh, thank you to Johnny Tidelips for that. Yeah, brilliant. Thanks for everyone who got in touch on Twitter as well as Facebook for those suggestions. But that is uh, sadly all we've got time for. This is the last. Uh, squeaky balls time you're going to see before Christmas hence the mm. stupid stupid hat and the Christmas team themed team there that was difficult to say especially after what we got up to last night but regardless we'll move on huge thanks to Lagbooks for sponsoring us we will be back probably the first Saturday of we're back January 2nd there you go There's, look at this guy with the dates yeah. Fair well, I'm, I'm working I'm the, <laughs> well that would be it well I'll be working too yeah. I'll probably have to be here as well huge thank you to Lagbooks for sponsoring thank you for watching um, from Mikey and Gavin and Sean Dyche we'll catch you for the next one Maha Mantra, Maha Mantra, Maha Ma- Do you know what actually annoyed me a little bit on Friday? Leeds are beaten by Brighton and Hove Albion. Brighton and Hove. Should there are two places? Why should Leeds be expected to play against them? It's a farce. Maha Mantra, Maha Mantra. <laughs>